It's Friday, August the 14th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is episode number 47 of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning August the 11th, 2014. Less than a month after hackers at the SciScan 360 conference in Beijing, China, managed to worm their way past security firewalls in Tesla Motors computer systems and gain unauthorized access to a Tesla Model S, Tesla is on the offensive. As we reported earlier this week, Tesla spent last week recruiting at the world-renowned DEF CON security conference in Las Vegas with the expressed intent of hiring 20 to 30 of the best white hat security experts the world has to offer. We, we say Tesla, but it was actually Tesla's very own hacker princess, white hat and former hacker Kristen Padgett, previously an employee of Apple computers and someone who helped Microsoft patch a very nasty security flaw in its Vista operating system back in the day, Padgett was putting potential recruits through their paces, finding out what they knew and figuring out if they had what it takes to keep Tesla's growing fleet of Model S cars around the world safe from cyber criminals. And this, we understand, is only the start. As Tesla's impact on the world grows, expect its security division to get ever stronger and ever smarter in order to stay one step ahead of the baddies. Last week, Chevrolet tested a sneak peek of its upcoming 2016 Chevy Volt, the second generation of its popular range extended plug-in. There's quite a lot of interest into what the Volt 2.0 will bring to the table in terms of range, specification and fuel economy. But there also seems to be a lot of confusion among different rumour mills as to what the car will be. As we detailed last week, conventional wisdom points to the 2016 Volt offering a larger lithium-ion battery pack for longer all-electric range, five rather than four seats, and perhaps a more Prius-styled hatchback for larger cargo carrying capabilities. But a UK site Auto Express said this week that the second generation Volt will feature a smaller battery pack in an attempt to drive down cost, meaning less all-electric range and perhaps more reliance on the gasoline engine. Here at Transport Evolved, we think there's only one sensible conclusion to this, that General Motors is preparing a family of vaults, a la the Toyota Prius family, to cater to as many different needs as possible. What do you think? The struggling US-based Blink charging network may have been sold last year to fellow US firm Car Charging Group for just a fraction of its owed DOE funds after parent company Ecotality declared bankruptcy, but the Blink name is still causing a whole world of hurt for electric car owners. Just before Ecotality went bankrupt last year, it announced the fact that it would be turning down the current output of its public level 2 Blink charging stations amid safety concerns of overheating electrical components and melting receptacles. This week, Car Charging Group sent a message to Blink domestic charging station owners telling them the same thing would happen to their home units too. Carried out in the interests of safety, Car Charging Group says it's derated the output of all affected Blink domestic charging stations from 30 amps current at 240 volts to just 24 amps current at 240 volts, a temporary measure until new replacement parts can be sourced. The new owners of Blink say they'll happily offer a $100 rebate plus a $100 Blink account credit to anyone who wants to return their old Blink station and swap it for one of its own charging stations. As we might see here in the UK, blinking Nora, always on the blink. Uh, I'll stop. At anything from $60,000 to over $100,000, the Tesla Model S car isn't exactly cheap. And as we reported a few weeks back via Edmunds.com, its early production vehicles had something of a poor reputation when it came to the durability of their drivetrains. Initially, any drivetrain malfunctions experienced by customers resulted in Tesla carrying out a costly and time-consuming drivetrain replacement, but Tesla has warned that it won't be the way it deals with this particular problem moving forwards. You see, the Californian automaker knows exactly what the problem is with those early drivetrains and has fixed it in later production vehicles with a tiny 50 cent part, and from now on it intends to do the same with any cars which come in for the repair with the fault. Like the Apple is awesome rule practiced by Apple genii around the world, however, expect Tesla techs to go above and beyond the call of duty to keep the customer happy. But in this case, the cheap and reliable fix seems like the way to go.
Green car initiatives for hybrid, electric and hydrogen fuel cell cars are often attacked for being a little more than a tax break for those already wealthy enough to be able to afford an alternative fueled car in the first place. And to some extent, the data backs that view up, with more than four-fifths of claimants for California's electric vehicle rebate program coming from households with incomes higher than $100,000 per year. In order to tackle that inequality, a new bill is speeding through the Californian Senate with the intention of placing an income contingency test to all green vehicle rebates. Earn too much and you'll not be eligible for a green vehicle rebate. But at the other end of the income bracket, the bill will make it easier for low income families to make the switch towards a greener vehicle, offering incentives and rebates to anyone willing to trade their clunker in for perhaps a greener or maybe even no vehicle. Already approved by the House, Senate Bill 1275 has until August 31st to receive its final passage into law. Let's hope it makes it in time. At an expected purchase price of nearly $70,000, Toyota's first mass-produced hydrogen fuel cell car, rumored to be called the Toyota Mirai, isn't exactly going to be cheap to buy. But as we reported this week, it's not going to be all that cheap to fuel either. Talking at an official engagement earlier this week, Bob Carter, Toyota's senior vice president, admitted that initial costs of filling up the FCV would likely be in the region of 50 bucks per tank. With a range of around 300 miles per fill, that might seem a little steep, and in fact, you'd be right. At $50 per fill, the Toyota Mirai may end up costing more to drive than an average US car with a 26 mpg fuel economy. Compare it to the legendary Toyota Prius Hybrid, and you'll find that the Mirai might cost us twice as much to drive as Toyota's gasoline-sipping hatch. For a company that's meant to be selling a future fuel vehicle that's supposed to be cleaner, more convenient, and cheaper to run than a conventional car, that's a little bit of an own goal, don't you think? With just under a month to go before its inaugural race in Beijing, China, the FIA-approved Formula E Championship is shifting up a gear to publicise this new and exciting sport. Earlier this week, Formula E published video footage of its first full-scale mock race day at Donington Park, UK, followed by a few days later by an all-new TV ad called Drive the Future. Just 30 seconds in length, the ad is designed to drum up interest among millennials who may have never even watched motorsport before, as well as hardened F1 fans who are used to their motorsport being a little louder and more gas-guzzling. To cap it all, the Spark Renault SRT01e electric race car used in the Formula E series has just become one of the latest downloadable cars for the highly popular Forza 5 game for Xbox, meaning fans who don't get a chance to watch live can recreate their own Formula E races from the comfort of their living room. Neat. Who wants to game? You've either listened to it for hours or you've never even bothered to find out how to tune your radio in. But AM is still a valid broadcast method for everything from talk radio to local news, emergency information stations and local sports teams. Which is why the National Association of Broadcasters have become unusual petitioners to German automaker BMW in an attempt to give the BMW i3 electric car an AM radio. You see, while most electric cars on the market today still have an AM radio setting, BMW decided to leave out AM radio reception in its first mass-produced electric car, presumably due to concerns about AM radio interference from the powerful 125 kilowatt electric motor. But that says the NAB isn't good enough, and it wants BMW to bring AM to its i3 forthwith. It even offers to help BMW solve any engineering problems caused by the electric radio to ensure that the no-compromise car can get a no-compromise radio too. Tesla Motors unveiled two new supercharger stations in England this week, bringing the total number of supercharger locations in the UK to three. Joining one already in operation in the east of London, the second and third locations at the Hyatt Regency Churchill London and the Hyatt Regency Birmingham respectively bring supercharging to the prestigious hotel chain. But what's different around the UK superchargers, aside from the number of stalls per site, is the physical locations of the sites. Unlike the US, where superchargers are located beside major freeways, Tesla says it's focusing on urban areas in the UK so Tesla owners can travel into city and charge their car whilst having business meetings, attending the theatre or meeting friends. It even says it's happy for Tesla owners without charging or parking at home to use their local supercharger as their regular charging station, avoiding any of those nasty high charges that come with some of the other providers in urban areas. I was at the Birmingham launch with my wonderful intern uh, daughter and I promised her that I'd use her excellent video of the ribbon cutting in this week's show. So thanks for that Tuki and happy birthday for next week. 
That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the evolved transport news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And remember that there's no Transport Evolved talk show during the month of August because we're rejigging our studio and coming up with a few surprises for the relaunch of the show in September. I'm Vicky Gordon Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up.